everyone, and welcome to episode six of Cross-Chain Examination. I'm your host, Catherine Wu. Each week on Cross-Chain Examination, we have on the smartest and most interesting people working full-time in the crypto industry to tell us what's top of mind for them. So there's a well-known joke at this point that millennials cannot afford to buy homes because of our obsession with avocado toast and expensive oat milk lattes, which is funny for sure given how visual it is, but it's also a very dismissive and frankly incorrect portrayal. The reason why millennials can't buy uh, or invest in real estate has a lot more to do with macro reasons um, and real barriers to entry than avocado toast. Parcel is a company that is using crypto in a super innovative way to try and give millennials a way to invest in real estate without actually having to buy it or go through the process of getting a mortgage. So with us today is Trevor Bacon. He's the CEO of Parcel. He's going to come on to give us a glimpse into what he's building and why exactly crypto solves this problem. Okay, welcome to the show, Trevor. Thank you for having me. Super excited to be here. Um, so before jumping into Parcel, I wanted to touch on real estate as an asset class, which, you know, there's that funny meme about how, jo you know, millennials can't afford to buy homes because we love avocado toast too much. Um, but I think the real reason is probably more complicated than that. So can you just tell me and also our listeners, why is home buying just such a broken or like impossible dream for so many millennials today? And, and furthermore, can you talk about the barriers to entry for real estate from an investment perspective? Yes, certainly. So thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, so real estate is a, uh, a very good asset class. Um, it's the largest asset class in the world. Um, but, but what uh, makes it somewhat difficult for many to invest is that it requires a large amount of capital at one time. So basically you need to save up um, to participate. And you also need really good credit to, to get a mortgage. Um, and then, uh, so that's on the traditional home buying side on maybe the uh, kind of crowdfunding or, or shared uh, fra or fractional um, experiences that you could undertake, you need to be an accredited investor. Um, so that's the kind of the financial uh, hurdles that many face. Um, and then there's some other structural um, hurdles, one financial, which um, we're seeing uh, a lot of institutionals buy up homes. So they're seeing that the returns on actually owning the homes and then renting them are better than mortgages. And so uh, institutional purchasing has been at, is at the highest level it's ever been. Uh, and then sa same thing with I buyers. And then with respect to millennials, I think also just from a preference perspective, um, you know, I think uh, people want more flexibility now. Uh, we've seen the power of remote work. We've seen that um, you can live outside of your place of work and still be productive. So I think uh, millennials are looking for more flexibility because it is a very big decision to put down the majority of your, your net worth into a home all at once. Um, it does constrain you in many other ways. So providing flexibility um, to to folks without um, um, limiting their exposure to to real estate as an investment class is something that we're trying to do. Yeah, actually, um, this reminds me of conversations I have with my friends, you know, just like people who work in crypto full time. Like I've been in long enough in the space where all my friends also work in crypto. And so one of the issues is not just about the financial portion. It's that um, they can't get mortgages because banks are not friendly to your crypto assets. So sometimes even though you may have enough to show for, you still can't get a mortgage just because maybe banks are averse to like what your net worth is made up of. So I feel like there are more burdens than just, oh, you can't put down a down payment. It could be just like, what is your net worth like comprised of even? Yeah, I mean, that's another, that's kind of a newer element. I think <laughs> generally speaking, um, you know, I think that, that uh, folks are trying to understand how to grapple with like the risks of crypto um, and, and you know banks are slow to move, obviously, and they're very risk averse. Um, and so, uh, it, yeah, it's just they're trying to wrap their minds around exactly how crypto functions, especially as a what would be like a collateral or kind of um, worst case scenario backstop uh, within the you know the loan giving process. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just even home buying, it's even renting. I read an article that said in New York City, the median rent is at $4,000 a month now, which boggles my mind is insane. Um, so I guess, you know, given this problem with people wanting to buy homes, can't do it for, for multiple reasons. 
Um, how are you solving this problem at Parcel? So just walk us through on a high level what Parcel is, how it works, or even like why you wanted to start it in the first place. Yeah. So rent is actually a great example because if you're renting, you're short your neighborhood because if the, the landlord's asset goes higher, they'll charge higher rent and the tenant is on the hook. So mm. you actually just end up paying more without any benefit. So. True. Um, yeah, Parcel is, so we are addressing many of these issues at Parcel. Parcel is a uh, digital real estate platform based on Solana. What we're doing is uh, we're creating price feeds uh, via uh, uh, publicly available data that um, mimics the price per square foot. So we use the data available and we get to a price per square foot for a, a city or a neighborhood and then allow you to gain exposure to that in an investment um uh, uh, capacity um, on the blockchain. So we have Parcel Labs, which um, ingest billions of data points um, to arrive at a very representative price per square foot of New York City, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Tribeca. And then we bring that on chain. And then we have a, a decentralized exchange that allows Catherine or anyone to actually uh, gain exposure to uh, the city or, or neighborhood. Um, and the reason we, we, we started this was, well, there was multiple reasons um, and they kind of keep, keep expanding and, and the world kind of is presenting more of an opportunity. But um, during COVID, we saw a massive move in, in prices across the country and a very, um, not all at once, it, it, there was a very, uh, there was a large disparity of prices uh, in different regions, right? So New York City was going down, Miami was going up, LA was going up, Austin was going up, San Francisco was going down. And so that type of volatility we've never actually seen in um, in in the real estate market. Uh, so, so much idiosyncratic movement. Um, and my background, um, and, and same with Kellen, was uh, a co-founder. Um, we were at, in a hedge fund. So um, we were very used to relative value trading. So you know, we were like, man, I wish we could go long Miami and short New York or any kind of variation of that. And so over time, so that was kind of the genesis. Um, and we'd seen fractional plays um, emerge, fractional ownership. Uh, but those are difficult. They, they don't scale well because you need capital and time. So imagine you needed to buy a house or a building or a, any, any type of asset. You need the capital up front to get the loan. And then it takes a while to close. So there's, you can't bring on the inventory to satisfy the demand. That's why we are coming at it, at it from a different angle, which is top down, uh, basically creating these um, indexes, which are the reference price and really representative of actually what's happening on the ground. Um, and then as this has happened, um, as we, we got going, there, the, the, the structural flaws in real estate continue to emerge, right? Like the inflation is at all time highs of, of housing. There's a huge supply shortage of housing. Um, and that, that that's structural. Um, and then rents are, are going through the roof. And then, it, you know, folks are kind of getting squeezed, like their real earnings are now being diminished by by inflation, uh, making it harder to own a home, plus the eye buying uh, is scenario that I laid out earlier. So there's a lot of structural tailwinds for some sort of alternative investment in real estate. And those kind of are emerging as we're, we've been building. You know, what I really like about Parcel, but I imagine what makes it also really hard is not, you don't just separate it into like New York or Miami, you break it down into neighborhoods too, right? So like you can, you know, long Williamsburg, short Chelsea or something, um, which I think is amazing. It actually, it's pretty um, tailored to, I think like what people would want to do anyway. Like I want to buy a home and blah, 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 because I think, you know, it's good value. Um, but I imagine the data collection process is probably pretty intense. Like how do you um, ensure that the data that you have accurately re represents like real time pricing? Yeah, so um, so initially we're gonna think of it like a product rollout. So we're gonna touch um, six major metros uh, and then roll out the neighborhoods um, uh, after that to get folks kind of understanding because it, it, it is a completely new idea and system. So we don't want to overwhelm. Um, so we'll start out in um, Miami, New York, what, Miami, Manhattan, uh, Brooklyn, uh, L.A. San Francisco and um, 
Phoenix. And then from there, we'll break down the, the neighborhoods within each. So we'll test Williamsburg and Tribeca and the Upper East Side, South Beach, Brickell, et cetera. Um, and so, yeah, the data collection process is um, something that um, super our, our data team is hands down best in best in class. Um, and we had to really architect this in a scalable manner from the start because there is no feed that we can use. So, um, you know, initially we were like trying to find a third party source, but uh, there were various um, constraints. And then we wanted to control our own destiny, so we decided to do it ourselves, which is a which is a massive undertaking. So we're using the most cutting edge data technologies. We continue to push the envelope there with with scale in mind. Um, so right now we um, we cover about um, two, 2,200 zip codes in the in the country, and we'll have full coverage of the of the country um, by the end of the year, and then we'll be moving into international. Um, international regions shortly thereafter, after we assess the data um, landscape in the different countries. So Paris, Singapore, some places in Latin America are on our, on our roadmap, um, hopefully by 4Q. Well, I like that it's like um, you wanted to start a derivatives product and it ended up building like a data company <laughs> or like yeah, having a lot of like really proprietary data, I imagine. Yeah, so we, um, yeah, it, it all, the, the, the goal of, of um, the goal of, of the data is, is multifold. So obviously we want to create a, a um, very representative index, but what has happened in that process as we've, we've started to ingest. So now we have all, all properties in the, in the country indexed by latitude and longitude. And then there's a, a lot of other types of data sources that you can lay on top of that. And we've designed a very scalable um, ingest process. And, and from that, we can uh, provide analyses and other types of indexes that are interesting, aside from parcel, the protocol. Um, the team's put out a couple pieces on affordability, work from home index, which catalogs various different attributes um, for work from home to help identify which areas are the, are the most friendly. Um, we have amenities, weather, wireless, all of this is now layered on top of our core data, which allows a lot of flexibility uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. I like that, um, you know, sometimes you hear an idea and you're like, oh man, like that's such a good idea. Like, as you say it, it sounds so obvious. Like, um, I think fractional ownership has starting to, you know, pick up. So I think I first noticed it in art. So, you know, obviously investing in art is expensive for the same reasons. And so I've seen just like pop-ups in galleries in Soho and like startups just wanting to do fractionalized art. And so when you talk about real estate, which is 10, 20 X price of like artwork, probably, um, it kind of makes sense to do it like a investment, but fractionalized so that like, I don't have to put up all of the money to buy it, whatever. I don't know how much Soho one bedrooms go for these days, but probably too much money. Um, <laughs> but as you build out a product, obviously you're amassing your own data. Um, I guess a big question with anything built in crypto is, is why crypto, why do you have to use, you know, blockchain technology for this? And so as you were thinking through it, um, what led you to decide to build this, um, in crypto? Yeah. So, uh, I think, uh, for one, um, DeFi provides, so we're a DeFi platform. So, and, and DeFi provides, a, a new and novel way to kind of accumulate capital, um, and, and liquidity. And so that was the first, um, that was kind of the first, like one of the first, uh, you need capital to do this. So that is a way to kind of crowdsource capital or allow kind of permissionless, people in a permissionless way to allow people to participate in the system. So uh, both on the like on the liquidity providing side or on the trading side. And so because real estate is so distributed, there's so many stakeholders, obviously banks provide loans for mortgages, but um, it is probably the most distributed asset in terms of um, of all assets, just given the fact that uh, people own houses, everyone more or less lives in a house. Um, so we do want to provide the opportunity for um, people to express a view that could be on the liquidity providing side if they want to take a synthetic short or earn uh, money on their earn, earn yield on their capital. They should be allowed to and, and a centralized system would only allow a bank 
uh, to do so. So that was the main um, that was the main reason behind it. Uh, and then also just providing access for for the broader um, world to participate, I think, is something that crypto allows you to do in a pretty frictionless way. Like you can scale pretty quickly. Um, you know, there's obviously various uh, it's a changing regulatory environment, but at the same time, having permissionless systems allows the speed uh, of network effects to take place much more quickly. Yeah. And so I guess the whole idea, as we talked on earlier, is in order to use parcel, you don't have to um, go through a bank. You don't have to go through that like middleman process. And so, again, the whole point of like democratizing investing is that people can just invest what they want. You get educated, you do your research, you just can do it. You don't have to like wait for approval of like my friends in crypto who can't buy homes because banks don't recognize crypto as a real asset. So I think that's very core to to the ethos of crypto. Yeah, exactly. It's an open system. <laughs> um, <laughs> so switching gears, um, I, you know, obviously, so just, you know, for listeners as disclosure, um, the fund I work at Archetype is an investor in Parcel. And so, but just also personally, I've been following along just like what you guys have put out. And you recently had this big like, homeowners association like mint um where you like you know you people can like mint little houses and like you know i got like a little new york brownstone which i was happy about um lifelong dream to own a brownstone and i now have an nft but um i wanted to ask about you know the thinking behind launching the home the, the oha um nfts um and what you were thinking about allowing holders to do and even just like why you you decided to do a drop like that yeah, so it was a great experiment. So we we um, you know we were kind of w once we first got together in, in October, like our first offsite, we thought an NFT would be a really good idea for community building, um, and uh, so we went forward with it. Uh, we got a really great artist. The marketing team did an incredible job um, pushing um, pushing it. And what it is, is it's the Homeowners Association. It's a collection of 7,777 various um, houses uh, in, in, you know, art uh, that uh, span Miami, L.A., New York and uh, Phoenix. And so the idea behind it was um, to create a community uh, at the start. Um, and then from there, once you get it out, like NFTs are pretty powerful. Once you get it out. And into the hands of people, um, you know, you can do a lot of stuff. So um, we've done several. Uh, we've done several, uh, or, or we've hosted. We've 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 done several things with it um, to start. So one, um, we hosted a in real life taco truck event in in um, in uh, around NFT NYC. We did. We we uh, we just hosted, or we just dropped our merch site uh, yesterday. Which um, wait? Tell has, us the URL. Tell us the website. <clears throat> shop dot shop dot house. Oh my god, I love this. And name. if you have an NFT, you get a free hat of of the of the place that you hold the NFT of, and then the HOA shirt. Um, and then we'll gate the uh, test net or, or not test net. We'll gate the main net uh, alpha with the NFT. Um, so th these are things that uh, it, it's kind of a, it's a great thing to have out in the universe because you can you can do a lot with it. Uh, and that's what we're doing. So we'll find different ways to provide value to the HOA community, the parcel community. Um, you know, we like it a lot now that we've gotten it out there. Um, the mint went really well. We sold out in about 15 minutes. Um, and yeah, we couldn't be more thrilled. So it's, um, it's fun to have, it, it's a community building, uh, initiative and we'll continue to reward our, our holders, uh, with mm -hmm. various things, various drops, various early access, etc. I need to like pay attention to you. So I'm not like trying to redeem my like hat right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to leave this open. If you're a whale, you get a hoodie, you get two, you get a hoodie, mm -hmm. hats, Etc. So amazing. Um, I, you know, what I really like about aside from just like, you know, homeowners associations, I think traditionally, I just think of like really angry older people who, you know, 
marched around the neighborhood. Um, and now it's just associated with like cute little houses I own that are NFTs. Um, but it's yeah, also- Yeah, that, really- that was the thought. It was like yeah. homeowners associations are, are very uh, kind of Scary. stodgy. So yeah. it's like, this is the coolest home. If you go to HOA.house, like it'll say the coolest the homeowner association you'll have to be a part of. So yeah. it was a, like the marketing team, um, you know, it just they nailed the nailed the name. I, I think that's also really fun as like a crypto company. Like you're building a DeFi platform, but you're also experimenting with NFTs and everything else that crypto has to offer. Um, like, so in a, whatever, a couple episodes ago, we talked about NFTs and like what they're for and like, how do you really like build community around it? Um, and I, I thought that as like a as like a marketing um, angle, but also from like how do you build your early community before you really like launch a product? How do you get people to buy in on what you're doing and like feel like they're part of the club? Yeah, yeah, you know it, it, it's a great tool. It's a lot of work to, and you gotta you gotta market it right. So, um, but it's it's a phenomenal tool, and then it's there forever. So. You know, I think, um, you know, we have the wallets, you can drop stuff. You, you, there's just a lot you can do with it once it's out there. It's just getting it out there. Um, you know, we didn't know how it was going to go. We, we bust, you know, we, we worked really hard to, to, to do everything we could to make it uh, uh, a good launch, but we didn't, we didn't know or a good mint. Um, and so, yeah, now it's just, uh, you know, rolling with the punches and seeing how we can do more fun stuff for the, for the community. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and do you have, um, did you talk about, you know, before you launched, if it goes well, what would we use the funding for? Um, have you thought beyond just like, you know, you sell the NFTs, what do you want to use that funding for? And what do you, you know, aside from merch, is there anything else yeah. like governance wise? Oh, yeah. So yeah. we, um, we, uh, yeah, there, there's the merch, but we also, we are giving away a house. we so N- Nadama can sue, um, he's a, a, a very well-respected football player, well, well-regarded football player, but also very active in financial literacy communities. Um, and we partnered with him uh, and we're, we're donating um, basically a down payment. So $100,000 of the proceeds are going to buy someone a house. We did a TikTok uh, competition and we've selected a winner. It's still being verified via legal. But we are cool. we are paying their down payment for the house, so they actually got priced out of uh, a home um, during uh, last summer. So um, we are we are gonna actually buy them a house. So that's like the main. That was with the proceeds for the mint. Um, we're going towards for the most part, and then other various uh, initiatives, obviously merch, um, uh, future um, uh, drops, and and um, other stuff for the community. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess like now that we're on the topic of next steps, um, what is in the immediate short term, what's next for parcel and then just zooming out, what do you hope parcel gets to in like 10, 15 years, but let's start with a short term first. Yeah. Short term. So we are, um, we are on pace to, so we've done three test nets. We've had a hundred, over a hundred thousand users on the test nets that over about 400,000 transactions, about 50,000 feedback form. So what we've been doing for the last three months is um, we've been iterating from user feedback uh, from the test net. So we've added, um, uh, we've, we've upgraded the UI UX substantially. We've added concentrated liquidity, which helps uh, traders get better prices. We've added a peg stability module. We've done three audits, um, one from Certic, one from uh, another well-known Solana uh, vendor. Uh, and we have them on retainer to make sure that our security is is best in class. Um, so that's what we've been working on. We're we're slated to launch our mainnet alpha, which is gated by the HOA NFT on July 27th. So stay tuned on that. Um, what we'll do from there is really uh, we do think there's a large UI UX arbitrage in crypto. So um, onboarding people with uh, more friendly um, uh, and intuitive experiences that they're used to from Web2. Uh, portfolio views, um, various different tools that they can use is something that we're going to be focused on to to roll out uh, shortly thereafter. So call it a few months after that. We'll have we already have it in the works, but you know it takes time to develop and code up. So that's going to be our next release, and then we'll see um, kind of what the market's looking for with respect to products. But we'll have other protocols on top of the data that allow exposure to financial instruments around real estate. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, sorry. What do you mean? Like, aside from just price exposure and zip code? No, there's just various other. So like we have to examine what what uh, it is, but like uh, you could have perpetual futures ah. based on on the data. You can have uh, savings vaults. You, you know, there's just different types of um, uh, instruments that we could uh, explore and implement um, once we're out in the out of the wild. Mm-hmm. And so I guess just like as a walkthrough for like any one who might be interested, um, parcel, you, I guess like you log in or you like get an account, you get a wallet and you can just start putting like $50 into this neighborhood and a hundred dollars into that neighborhood. And yeah. So, um, think of it like, so we're, we're, uh, your global real estate portfolio. So you connect your wallet. It's a very intuitive, uh, much like any other swapping interface, um, USDC, you know, Brooklyn, and you can put as much or as little as you want in that pool. Um, or, or you can, it, well, that would go into your wallet. But um, yeah, so you can invest as much or as little as you want. You could also provide liquidity. So we have a, a great um, uh, liquidity provision interface, um, which helps you monitor and track your vault health, your uh, position health, uh, your collateral ratio. So we have a, we have a, a great system for that. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty intuitive. If you just wanted to trade, it'd just be a very, very simple swapping USDC for Brooklyn, Manhattan, Miami, um, or any other places we roll out. So we're trying to make it as as seamless as possible, but it is your global real estate portfolio. That's like way better than going through like six months of like mortgage and closing and negotiating. So that seems a lot easier. (laughs) Exactly. Um, okay. So in the short term, that's what it is. So what about zooming out like in 10, 15 years? Yeah, so we think that this is an incredible start, low, low friction to get folks investing in real estate. Um, the goal is to get as many users as possible, become the actual reference price for real estate um, across the globe. I think later down the line, we're not, um, you know, who knows what the world will look like in 10 or 15 years, but we could see a, a, a stack uh, based on crypto, uh, where you're getting loans and you're actually closing deal like real estate deals on um, on chain. There's a ways uh, to go before we get there, but we think if we have the pricing mechanism to do so, we can be the foundation for that. So think if you have title, loan, list, and then uh, transaction all on a uh, single platform, uh, it is the global real estate platform. So that's the long, long term. I think there's a lot that has to happen between now and then, mainly on the infrastructure side. There's just a lot of catching up to do um, in terms of uh, modernizing the the traditional real estate stack from legal, title, appraisal. Um, but we do think we can push that forward being being a, a, a pricing mechanism to help be that be that reference where you get the loan, get the appraisal, et cetera. Yeah. You know what um, Ash and I always say at Archetype, we're like, uh, his big thing is smart contracts underpin the future of digital commerce. And I think real estate is honestly part of that too. So I'm with yeah. you on your 10 year vision. Um, cool. Well, so where can people go and check out and follow everything that Parcel is doing? Yes. So uh, the first is Twitter, Parcel. Uh, we have the handle at parcel, um, parcel.co is our website, P-A-R-C-L dot C-O, um, H-O-A dot house is our, our NFT site. And then, um, we have a newsletter. So you subscribe on Twitter. There's a, there's a, uh, there's a button to subscribe. There's about 32,000 folks that subscribe. So join them and then follow along. So we'll be launched, um, in, in the lot, in the, in, we'll be live um in about a couple weeks and then we'll just um yeah stay tuned awesome all right well thank you so much trevor can't wait to see you go live thank you so much thank you all for tuning in to another episode of cross chain examination as a reminder please remember to like subscribe um leave me comments tweet at me um and we also have a twitter handle for the podcast at cross chain pod um we have an email that's open it's cross chain examination at gmail.com i would love to hear any feedback thoughts ways to improve and i'll see you all next week